Eddie Hearn believes Terence Crawford will retire if he doesn't get the mega fight against Canelo Alvarez. We won't get the rematch. I don't think Terence Crawford will ever fight again. Yeah. You know, I think unless he gets Canelo, I don't think Crawford will fight again. He definitely won't fight Virgil Ortiz. Won't rematch Madrimov. You know, he's made a lot of money and I think he's just, you know, he's, he's comfortable, isn't he? Hearn reiterates that the four-division world champion Crawford only wants fights that will pay him an absolute fortune. Recently, the WBO ordered 154 LB champion Sebastian Fundora to fight against Terence Crawford next in a unification fight, but that fight is not likely to happen, according to Eddie Hearn. The only one who can do that is the Mexican mega superstar Canelo. Hearn claimed, I don't think Crawford will fight again unless it's Canelo Alvarez. I don't think he'll fight Virgil Ortiz and he won't rematch Israel Madrimov. He definitely won't fight Boots. So, who are you going to fight? I don't think he'll fight Fundora. Crawford could make so much money in fights against Virgil Ortiz, Boots, Madrimov, and Fundora. It wouldn't obviously be in the same league as what he would receive fighting Canelo, but he's not getting that fight because the Mexican star isn't interested in fighting him unless he's paid a gigantic pile of cash. Hearn further commented about the situation saying, he's made a lot of money and he's not interested in fights that will pay him an absolute fortune or get him really excited and the one that's excited in his mind is Canelo. Canelo. If he can't get that fight, I don't think he'll fight again. Also, Canelo Alvarez remains open to fighting Crawford next if he's victorious in the September 14th title fight against Edgar Berlanga. Crawford, after his victory over Israel Madrimov to secure the WBA light middleweight title, has made his aspirations clear. He wants to challenge Canelo Alvarez, who currently reigns as the unified super middleweight champion. However, the weight difference between the two raises questions about the feasibility and competitiveness of the match. In a recent in a recent interview, Alvarez acknowledged the buzz but expressed skepticism about the benefits of such a fight. When asked if the WBO order eliminates the possibility of facing Crawford, Alvarez remarked, I don't think so. I'm not saying that fight can't happen. That order doesn't matter. Canelo previously noted that the significant weight disparity could result in a no-win scenario for him. If I beat him, people will say it was expected because of the size difference. But if he wins, it would be seen as a massive upset, Alvarez explained, suggesting that the fight might not be worth the risk from his perspective. Canelo said that if the money is right, then there is no problem in him facing Crawford, but Canelo also said that Crawford will be an easy fight for him due to the weight class difference between the two fighters. Um, the, the Sheik said that he would be willing to pay whatever you want to yeah, fight Crawford. Fine. Yeah. If he's willing to pay whatever I want, <laughs> comes out. That, that'll work. If so, if I he, mean, <laughs> yeah, you're in. So if, yeah. if the numbers were right with Crawford, you'll do it why not why not mm -hmm. i think Crawford don't get me wrong he's a great fighter mm -hmm. but uh for me in my weight class is a it's an easy fight mm -hmm. for me easy money so if the money is right i'm i'm in because you know i don't like to fight guys like like Crawford because he move a lot and the fight is not that great mm -hmm. i i saw Crawford the last uh, uh, the last fight and he don't he don't move uh, uh, that much now so mm -hmm. Yeah, is if the money is right, I'm, I mean, why not? Fundora promoter Samson Lukowicz also said that he is convinced the 30-day deadline to strike a deal is actually less than a 15-day deadline because Lukowicz is convinced Crawford still has thoughts of fighting Saul Canelo Alvarez. He said, I'm waiting on an offer now and I'm certain one will not come until after the 14th. I'd like to find out right now if Crawford's going to fight for the money or the titles. I believe he wants the money. Crawford will do everything he can to fight Canelo and his team will not call me until after the fight. There is deep skepticism in the industry over whether the Fundora Crawford ever happens. Lukowicz, however, warms the conversation by saying this following, Crawford's narrow AUG, third victory by unanimous decision over former World Boxing Association 154-pound title holder Israel Madrimov. Winning the final two rounds on all three scorecards decided the outcome in Crawford's favor after he failed to back or hurt the younger Uzbekistan fighter. Crawford is 37 years old and Sebastian Fundora will kick his if Crawford fights the way he fought Augers 3, he has no shot. He will get knocked out by Fundora. Turkey Alalshik also said that Crawford is only looking to fight Canelo next. He said, I don't think Crawford will fight anyone except Canelo. This is my opinion. This is what I feel. But it is about him. We gave him an offer for Virgil Ortiz and I don't know if he will take it or not. We have an agreement to do a big fight for Ortiz if Crawford doesn't take the fight. But I don't think Crawford will take it. I think he only wants Canelo. I understand that. I respect all the fighters. Turkey also said that he's looking forward to working with Canelo despite the two having some tension recently. But Eddie Hearn says he's unsure if discussions will occur between Canelo Alvarez and His Excellency Turkey Alalshik. 
for a fight with Terence Crawford in 2025. Hearn says Turkey was upset recently that the Mexican superstar Canelo, 61 2 39 KOs, didn't at least want to speak to him about putting together a fight with Crawford, 41 0 31 KOs, who His Excellency is high on. Hearn told, His Excellency asked Canelo to meet him, and he said, No, I don't think there's anyone in boxing who wouldn't meet His Excellency other than Canelo Alvarez. Canelo is incredibly rich, so it's not the same thing for him to put off Turkey as it would be for a normal fighter who wasn't sitting on top of a $250 million fortune and could bring in massive money against anyone they choose. Eddie further commented about this situation saying, His Excellency has in his head to make these incredible marquee fight, which is amazing for boxing, but when he can't make them, he's frustrated, said Hearn about Turkey's desire to match Canelo against Crawford. He has the ability to make them because he has the war chest to do it. I think he was frustrated that he couldn't at least have a conversation to try and make Crawford Canelo, but who knows if that conversation will come around. Crawford has achieved many big things in boxing, but victory over Canelo would be his biggest accomplishment. The super middleweight world champion has only tasted defeat twice, against Dimitri Bivol and Floyd Mayweather, and it's the Bivol battle that Crawford's trainer Bomack McIntyre will be studying if a fight between Crawford and Canelo takes place. He said, he made him move his feet. If the fight ever materialized, that's the fight that I would go back and watch. I'd look at Mayweather versus Canelo too. However, Tim Bradley wants Terence Crawford to take the fight with Jaron Boots Ennis. Bradley wants Crawford to come down from the clouds, stop chasing Canelo and begging for a fight, and take what's in front of him against Boots. He said, I hear you bud and the Canelo fight is a dream fight of yours. However, there's a guy right around your weight class that is similar to Canelo and Benavidez. You hold two titles in the welterweight division. Bradley further said, everybody is going to come out and watch this fight because Boots is supposed to be the next coming, said Bradley. When Bud is out the door. When he's gone, Boots is supposed to be that guy. Boots is trying to line himself up with Bud because he knows that Bud is going to be leaving the game, and he believes he can beat him. But Eddie Hearn said that fighting Boots Ennis would be a more riskier thing for Crawford to do than him fighting Canelo. Crawford knows how dangerous Boots and he, he knows it won't pay the money that the risk warrants just yet. But maybe in 6 to 12 months, maybe that's the mega fight that he needs. That's a riskier fight in your opinion than Canelo? No, but if you lose to Canelo, you're losing to 168 all-time great. You lose to Boots Ennis. Sometimes these fighters feel like you're giving them the opportunity. Because if Crawf if Boots, when Boots beats Crawford, he, break he breaks for 100%. Another fight that many want to see is a clash between Canelo Alvarez and David Benavidez. David's father and trainer Jose Benavidez Sr. says Terence Crawford is not an exciting fighter and reminds him of Shakur Stevenson with his approach to fighting. He feels that Crawford just focuses on winning rounds and doesn't go out of his way to entertain the fans like his son David Benavidez does. Jose Sr.'s view on Crawford being a dull fighter might have to do with his recent debut at 154 against WBA champion Israel Madrimov. Crawford mostly boxed Madrimov in a chess match and didn't take chances to entertain the fans. Jose said, I'm not even going to compare David to Terence Crawford. David is an exciting fighter. David comes to throw punches and risk a lot. He comes to put on a performance. Jose further compared Crawford with his stablemate Shakur Stevenson and said, Terence Crawford is a really good fighter. He always plays it safe and wants to win the rounds, but I don't think he risks. He doesn't give the people excitement and he's going to come and have a good fight. To me, Terence Crawford is like a Shakur Stevenson. Crawford's showing against Madrimov wasn't the most decisive. Looking into a possible matchup against Canelo, many believed that the Mexican would be too much for Crawford. The two-time super lightweight world champion Regis Progress says the weight is too much, something he has told Crawford many times. He stated, I definitely want to see it for sure, but I don't think he can win. I definitely don't think he can win. I tell Crawford all the time I just don't think. They make weight classes for a reason. This last dude he fought was hitting him stuff and that dude was a 54 pounder, so I feel like that might be the ceiling for Terence Crawford. He further added, Styles do make fights, but Canelo is not just a big puncher. I think that somebody like Crawford, how skilled he is, if Canelo was just a big puncher, he might outbox him. But Canelo is skilled also. For me, I just can't see him beating him. I can't see the fight happening anyway. Mario Lopez said that Crawford shouldn't call out Canelo after this kind of performance. I think he's in trouble if 
like Canelo, I'll tell you right now. No, 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 no. After that, I don't think so. I don't. Th I mean, hey, Madrimal's a badass dude, though. He's a badass dude. The whole night was great, though. Good to see you, Alec. Lou DiBella advised Bud to not go for Canelo right now after watching his performance against Madrimov. He said, Bud boxed like Bud and won. Still, I think he had less snap on his punches at 154 pounds. Not much power evident. Think that resulted in Madrimov getting maybe too much credit. That and the frustration his bouncy, herky-jerky style was creating for Bud. 168? No, not now. Ishi Smith believed the weight jump didn't carry well for Crawford and advised him to stay at 154 and not fight Canelo. Smith said, Said, Bud should stay at 154. Don't fight Canelo. Don't think the weight carried well. Juan Marquez also believes the weight advantage for Canelo will be too big come fight night. He said, I think it's no good. Terence Crawford looking for the fight with Canelo, because Canelo is bigger than him. Three divisions. Right now, two as Crawford fought at 154. So two divisions, but I think the experience and the power, the weight is an advantage for Canelo. I think Crawford is a good fighter. You are the best in your division, but when you go to fight in another division, maybe you lose the fight because you lose the power if you go up to another division. Marquez compared it to when Canelo faced Amir Khan, who got the better of the exchanges early on, but ultimately suffered defeat by a devastating knockout in the sixth round. Did you see the fight with Canelo against Amir Khan? Khan used his speed and moved around the ring and then Canelo knocked him out with one punch. 154 is good for him, but 168 I don't like. For legacy, it's no good for Crawford. Finally, Marquez gave his definitive prediction and advised Crawford not to go any higher than super welterweight. He said, I don't think Crawford can beat him. He's a good fighter, but it's not his weight. He needs to make the fights at his natural weight. No more weight classes after 154 for him. But Carlos Adams, who sparred with Terence Crawford, believes that Terence shouldn't be fighting Canelo right now. He thinks that Canelo punches really hard and it will be dangerous for Terence's boxing career. <laughs> bastante libre, demasiada yo diría eh, pienso que no es, un, no es algo que él lo necesita ahora mismo, Crawford en su carrera ha demostrado que es un buen peleador pero pienso que no tiene que estar corriendo esos grandes riesgos, porque no solamente pone su carrera en riesgo, también pone su vida porque un golpe de Canelo le puede hacer daño de por vida I don't think Crawford needs the Canelo fight right now I think it's kind of needless for, for Crawford because his reputation is well cemented and a punch by Canelo could not only be dangerous for him to lose the fight, but it could be dangerous for his life. So no need for Crawford to, to cross the line into such a heavy weight class. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel Jacobs believes it will be a stern test for Crawford, who has expressed the desire to move all the way up to 168 pounds to fight Canelo Alvarez. Jacobs, who fought Canelo to a unanimous decision loss in May 2019, is giving Crawford a chance against Alvarez if the super bout were to ever happen. He stated, Skills sometimes pay the bills and we know for sure that Crawford has the skills over Canelo, it's just sometimes power, weight and experience may have a factor in that. So it will be a good test for Crawford, but I think the fans are the winner in that particular fight. Bernard Hopkins looked concerned for Terence Crawford, questioning his decision. He emphasized Crawford's well-being and benefit, asking what good the fight with Canelo could bring. Crawford cares about his life, and what with, and with that fight, what do that, what do that fight do for Canelo, fighting Crawford, and Crawford beats Canelo? What do that do for Canelo? I just think that there are so many other fights to make that's realistic and makes sense and less life risk. Bernard further added, I have serious reservations about Crawford's decision to pursue this fight with Canelo. It's a risky move and I question the wisdom behind it. As someone who's been in the ring and understands the physical toll it takes, I worry about Crawford's well-being in a matchup against someone like Canelo. What benefit does this fight hold for Crawford? There are plenty of other viable matchups available that don't carry the same level of risk. Bernard Hopkins says that he'd like to see Virgil Ortiz versus Terence Crawford instead of Crawford facing Canelo after watching Crawford's performance against Madrimov. Don't get fooled by what Crawford um, displayed last week, week and a half, but Crawford to me, I believe, won the fight. I believe the fight could have won a draw, so you can't look at that fight and say that he's, he's there for pickings, that his time is running out. We get up for certain fights at that level, and sometimes it can be not as good as the one that you got up for, which was Earl Spence. So I'm not fooled fooled by what people might be saying about Crawford, whether it's time, whether it's not, nah. I say he gets up for fights that he gets up for, and he at that age where it takes something super exciting to get excited about. I would like to see Virgil, based on Saturday, this Saturday, 
how he looks, how he executes, and how he wins, that it gives me a blueprint to see, yeah, he won, but will he win this way with Crawford? Virgil Ortiz trainer Robert Garcia thought Crawford's fight with Medramov was a very close fight, and it wasn't enough for Crawford to convince people into thinking that he could go up against Canelo at a much higher weight class. Garcia believes that a fight against Ortiz would be better for Crawford. Robert stated, maybe, Crawford's performance was not good enough for people to expect him to do very well against Canelo, so maybe, an Ortiz fight, is a good idea. Pauli Maliganagi also advises Crawford to stay at 154 and fight the likes of Virgil Ortiz, Sebastian Fundora, and Tim Chu. While Crawford is not the physically strongest fighter at 154 pounds, Malignaghi believes that his exceptional boxing IQ and skills allow him to compete with anyone in the division. However, he cautions that it is not without risk, given Crawford's age of 36 and the highly competitive nature of the 154-pound division. Pauli stated, Crawford's not necessarily the strongest of fighters at 154 Lalo Bs, but his IQ is so high that he can compete with anyone there, just not without risk. He's in a very competitive division, and he's 36 years old. The prospect of him fighting Tim Tezu, Sebastian Fundora, Virgil Ortiz Jr., Serhi Bohachuk, or Madrimov again is very appealing. But current unified heavyweight champion and fellow pound-for-pound -pound great Oleksandr Usyk told the three-knockdown rule that he would expect the naturally smaller man to get his hand raised. He said, I like Terence. He's a crazy man. Terence win. Listen, Terence is different man. Terence works on two sides. Right and left, he's very smart man. He feels distance and space. Canelo big, yeah, good boxer. But I say, Terence. Terence can box him like a big guy. Dimitri Bivol is a huge admirer of Terence Crawford, and he believes the Nebraska man could come up with a way to beat Canelo Alvarez. He said, I remember when I came to the boxing gym, one of the first lessons I learned was you should respect weight classes. But Terence is one of my favorite active fighters. He has good skills, very good skills. Maybe he could show us something. He knows already what to do. His coach knows. They will find a solution how to do it. One man who knows a thing or two about moving up through the divisions to win titles is Roy Jones Jr., who did so from middleweight to heavyweight. He gave his view on how the fight would go between the two pound-for-pound -pound greats. Jones said, With Canelo, I like Terrence, but I'm going to lean towards Canelo with his size early. But if he lets Terrence get into the fight, Terrence going to be a problem, and if Terrence can deal with the size, Terrence will beat him. Roy Jones Jones was then asked how Bud would deal with Canelo's power, to which he replied, That's what I'm saying. We don't know until we see Terence get hit, because we haven't seen him get hit with that power. That's the deciding factor. If you can change Bud's fight plan, you got a chance of beating him. But if you can't hurt him, you can't change his fight plan, and you got problems. But Raleigh Romero believes that Canelo will straight up murder Crawford if the fight ever happens. Bruh, if Terence Crawford moves up to fight Canelo, it's going to be a worse fight than Charlo running around and all this stuff. I'm gonna tell you straight up, Canelo by murder against Crawford, that, that shit wouldn't happen. They have weight classes for a reason. Bob Santos also believes that it would be a step too far for Crawford if he faces Canelo. He stated, I think it'll be a step too big for him, but he has earned the right to try it. I think Canelo would be too big and too strong for him at 168. I could be wrong. He could prove us wrong. But for the most part, I think that's just a lot to ask of Bud to go to 168. I may think it's a step too far, but that's what makes him great. That's why he was able to win at 135, 140, 147, and now 154. And he's been successful every single time time, so he's at least earned that right. That's what makes him great. So what are your thoughts about this situation? Do you want to see a Canelo Crawford fight? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.